What's up? This is Riley Knight with TCGplayer.com and I'll tell you this, it's not difficult to argue that blue, which of course is the traditional overlord of Eternal Formats and undisputed best colour in Magic, lags a little behind the pack when it comes to modern. There are a number of reasons for this, the lack of a truly excellent two-mana counterspell, the lack of any truly excellent card draw, and of course, the lack of a truly excellent Jace the Mind Sculptor. But 2017 has been a big year for the format, with cards like Fatal Push and Walking Ballista changing the modern landscape pretty significantly. In my view, however, one of the most important additions to the modern card pool came as we landed on the sandy shores of Ixalan and it's already going a long way in helping control decks get back up and about. I'm talking, of course, about Search for Azkanta. You can't have missed the power level of this card, and I think that its time as a format all-star is only just beginning. Let's dig into some of the decks that are early adopters of this exciting new blue technology. Well, of course we're bloody well going to begin by talking about a Celestial Colonnade deck. There's no M. Night Shyla Myla Ding Dong twist ending here, mate. Quite a twist! After searching high and low for his counter in white blue base decks, I found this card to be absolutely bananas. Hiding a win condition in your mana base is the oldest trick in the control player's book, or maybe second oldest after snap keeping a seven lander. But anyway, irrespective of which flavour of white blue we're talking about, whether it's straight white blue, Jeskai, or even Jeskai Breach, these decks are really seeking to prove a truth about us counter the Sunken Ruin, and that truth is, if you untap with it, the game is all but yours. Either you've got the answer that you need in hand, or you're going to draw to it in short order. And while I can't endorse playing fewer than four Snapcaster Mages, the fact that over half your deck is a hit for the Sunken Ruin means that you're basically never not getting there. Every element of Search for Azkanta is relevant and beneficial in these decks. Not only do you get to filter your draws and fill your bin with trash for Snapcaster Mage to later root through like Oscar the Grouch, when it flips, you also take advantage of the extra mana. Any deck with Sphinx's Revelation and various six drops will take a bonus land any day of the week. But that's not even mentioning the impulse ability. For so long, blue decks in modern have suffered hugely due to a lack of effective card draw. Even Ancestral Vision didn't get us there. As Cant of the Sunken Ruin offers an instant speed, nigh uncounterable source of card advantage, and in any control deck, that's absolutely bloody huge. I'm not much of a fan of Lantern Control, as when given the option, I like to play the popular trading card game, Magic the Gathering, rather than, well, whatever it is that Lantern players like to do. One recent convert to the Dark Side. Wait, hang on. How can a deck be built around lanterns and still be the Dark Side? Whatever. My point is this. BBD is now playing Lantern, and the free world weeps for him. I caught up with BBD about his recent choices, and it turns out that he's not just doing it to get enough dark side points to unlock Force Lightning, although that certainly does come into it somewhere, you'd have to think. As he mentioned in his article, he's a big fan of the strategy, and he's tuned his list after hours and hours of work at his unpaid lantern ship. Uh, his joke, not mine. I, I know it's an absolute ripper, though. I asked him about the searches in the sideboard, and he identified them as critically important Game 2 cards. They come in against control decks, he explained, and grindy matchups like Abzan, Jund, and The Mirror. So it's no surprise that Search for Azkanta helps you get on that grind, but uh, what do you need to grind through? Well, decks that have too much interaction to beat normally, BBD answered. It's important to have something to beat decks with 15 counter spells as well as Stony Silence. So essentially, Azkanta the Sunken Ruin gives Lantern Pilots a way to fight through overwhelmingly interactive decks. However, Lantern doesn't typically run fetch lands and has very low and cheap spells. So is flipping the search ever an issue? You can shred yourself and Mishra's Bauble always helps, BBD told me. It takes a while to flip sometimes, but that doesn't always matter if they aren't pressuring you. So there you have it. Some people just want to watch the world burn and unfortunately for all of us, Search for Azkanta is helping them do exactly that in post-board games, although very, very slowly. Can you just hand me that fire extinguisher? My esteemed colleague Adam Yurchik was on Burkhart Watch last week. He brought us the scoop on what Corey had been up to at GP Oklahoma City. And what a shock it wasn't to see the Control Master and part-time Devil May Cry character make the top 16 with his Grixis control list, this time with Search for Azkanta up in the mix. This list has that many one-offs that you'd think it accidentally turned up to the GP with a Thraxamunda EDH deck and his Trade Binder instead of a real modern deck. But as usual, Burkhart showed us the way. Just like all the cool kids are doing these days, he was hitting them for six in the end step. Turns out that Bolt Snap Bolt really is pretty good. Who knew? The huge number of one and two ofs in the deck make a lot of sense in this list. 
Ingrixes control more than any other deck. The sheer number of cards you see is staggering. For the longest time, this was thanks to Thoughtscale, which is a great piece of technology when playing both Snapcaster and K-Command, all of which are four ops, by the way. But combine Thoughtscale's ability to mill cards with Search for Azkanta's deep, deep hunger for a stock yard, and the synergies continue. In the olden days, we used to be afraid of a turn two Tassica, but these days it's all about flipping that search first thing. Grixis has the best answers across three colours to any and all questions the modern format can pose, and the many one-offs are all the more effective when snagged by the Sunken Ruins impulse ability. Given how deep you can dig with the Flipters Canter, in addition to how you can use cards out of the graveyards, one-offs are a much more useful resource in this list due to the sheer number of cards that you're going to see in a game. I'll tell you this for nothing, if there is even a sniff of a chance that straight blue-black control will work in modern, Gabriel Chapeau Jean Nassif will be the bloodhound to follow the scent to the bitter end. Recent video evidence has emerged showing him streaming a demir monstrosity with all the guilt of a toddler repainting the walls, and in it were the industry standard two copies of Search for Azkanta. This deck is the evil twin of white blue control and shares many elements, rather obviously, mainly blue ones, but sacrifices sweepers like Supreme Verdict and Planeswalkers like Gideon, Gideon, and Gideon to instead take advantage of the very finest in hand disruption, as well as point removal such as Go for the Throat and Hero's Downfall. One way in particular that this list maximizes Search for Azkanta is its curve. While it is, of course, a one-drop, Path to Exile isn't a terrific turn one or two play. Compare that with Thoughtseize, Fatal Push, or Inquisition of Kozilek. Flipping Search is pretty trivial with such a critical mass of cheap spells. And as ever, old mate Snapcaster Mage is the only creature in this list, alongside Tiago Chan reprising his role in Pacific Rim, or in other words, Torrential Gearhog. Outside of that, it is all as Azkanda hits all day. I haven't run the numbers properly, but my back-of-the-envelope calculations indicate that your chances of whiffing with Azkanda in this deck are about a squillion billion to one. Search for Azkanda shines in this deck in the same way that it does in many other blue-based control decks, but the fact that you're going to be flipping it quick as a hot pancake means that this deck can take advantage of the Sunken Ruin even faster than most and potentially draw even further ahead much more speedily. But that's it. That's all she wrote today, sports fans. These are the decks that are ahead of the curve, pushing control back to the forefront of the modern format, all with the aid of Search for Azkanta. As I mentioned, this card is yet to showcase its true power, and I think we're still yet to see its full impact on the format as a whole. Keep an eye on this one, my friends. Until next week, thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you next time.